So here we have a problem that everyone with a soldering iron has faced. You just completed your latest lead 10 masterpiece, only for the flux to solidify into an ugly, nasty mess. Let's zoom in to get a real good look at it. Yeah, this has got to go. Now you could use a tool like this, soap and water, if you're using the expensive solder with the washable flux. Or you can go with a super toxic option and use the flux off spray. Seriously, this stuff is bad news. Works like a champ though. But here I found the easiest option for cleaning flux residue, the ultrasonic cleaner. This unbranded cleaner I bought on eBay. It's of the three liter size and has a heater function I do not use and claims to be about 40 watts of ultrasonic power. We'll see about that later. Now I know what you're thinking, water can't clean flux residue. And you're right. I don't use water in this ultrasonic cleaner. I use denatured alcohol. Not only is it a cheap and effective solvent, you also find out if you have any cuts on your fingers when you handle the wet PCB. If an ethanol-based solvent is not available, I've used isopropanol with success as well, and gasoline once when a coworker added it to a cleaning bath without telling anyone. That did work, but I would not recommend. I only put about enough alcohol in the cleaner to submerge the PCB with the through-hole parts on the top of the board protruding through the surface. Then I turn on the cleaner and let it run for a minute or two. I like to move around the PCB a little so that fresh solvent is always in contact with the PCB. After I feel it's had enough time, I take the PCB out and give it a look. If all the flux is gone, I rinse the PCB off in the sink. If there is still flux residue, I put the PCB back in for another few minutes. After rinsing, I just let the PCB air dry and is ready to use. Now that it's clean, let's zoom in and there you have it, one flux-free PCB. Here's the before and after. Before and after. The solvent can be reused to clean multiple PCBs before changing. So if you plan on doing more PCBs that day, just put a lid on the ultrasonic cleaner and save it for later. But if you're not going to clean another PCB for an extended period of time, I would recommend transferring any remaining solvent to a more appropriate container. Now let's see how much power this thing draws and see if the quote 40 watts of output power is at all realistic. First let's get a reading of the standby power. Not much of a reading on the 1x loop. On the 10x loop let's call it 0.12 or about 12 milliamps or about 0.14 watts of power. Now back on the 1x loop with the cleaner on, it's about 0.9 amps, or 108 watts of power. So 40 watts of output power seems reasonable given the questionable efficiency of the driver and this brandless cleaner. And just to see what the heater draws, in case I ever want to use it, it draws about 1 amp, or 120 watts. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you all found that interesting. Thanks for watching.